Number one in our general business, approval of the agenda. Um, Move to approve. Dave, you got anything or no Alderman Yannick? Anything, to got to anything you want to? Hot item of his that you want to move up? No. No, nope, just here to observe. Okay. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Approval of the minutes from the August 22nd, 2016 Traffic Commission meeting. Move approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Report by the Police Department of the 2016 second quarter serious injury and fatality crashes. I think we all got a little I'm happy to report that we're on. But uh, several, uh, I guess what you call substantial injuries type accidents, but nothing that required uh, deployment to the reconstruction team. Pretty good for the summer months, so. It's very good. Mm -hmm. Good deal. Good job to the police department. Enforcement, some other things that are helping there. So, all right. Do I hear a motion to accept Carl's report? I'll make a motion to receive and place on file. That's the right motion. Right? Mm -hmm. okay. Second. Motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Or request by Alderman Dorf to remove the 15 minute 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday zone on the west side of Broadway in front of Jake's Pizza. The area around it predominantly consists of two hours, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday parking. Um, in front of Jake's Pizza itself, there is a 15 minute, uh, 7 to 7 Monday through Friday loading zone. Now, um, yeah, as some of you may know, Jake's Pizza is relatively new to that area. It's been there for maybe what, two years now. And so prior businesses may have needed to have a loading zone. I'm presuming that Jake's does not. It's mainly to sit down type of a restaurant and uh, the need for it is, is no longer is my, uh, my assumption now. I believe um, Alderman Dorf, you may have some more information. That was, that the request was made by the owners of Jake's Pizza. Alder Zima is aware of this um, request um, and they just, it's the only one that's a 15 minute one and we'd like to change it to the two hour parking so it's consistent with all the other parking on that street. Staff supports everything. I'm surprised they're not here. I thought they were going to be here, but they're not. I'll make a motion to remove the 15 minute and replace it with a two hour, seven to seven. Is that what Monday through Friday. Yeah. Whatever you said. <laughs> you got the like notes, I don't. Uh, <laughs> we're basically changing it from a 15 minute loading to a two hour and then keeping the same time stipulations. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Motion been made. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion been seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion Aye. carries. F item five, request by Alderman Stoyer for consideration with possible action to study the feasibility of establishing a yield or stop condition at Park and Bond Street. Yes, this was held up from last meeting and um, the intention that uh, I might be able to go visit the site um, and do an evaluation. Uh, of it. Um, I do have another map that um, does show some photos, so let me bring that up here. So this is the intersection. Um, these two values here, this 320 feet and this 385 feet, that indicates the intersection site distance. Um, both streets are posted 25 miles an hour and for uh, that speed, the intersection site distance would be 280 feet. So we, we definitely have it uh, in both directions. And that number actually is if you would pull up and uh, just north of, in this case, would be the stop bar. So as most people do, they'll pull up and then they'll slightly creep forward to if they, if they need to. So, and when that happens, you even get more intersection site distance. So. We didn't see any issues from that perspective. Um, I'll actually show you the, I got photos here. So 
this would be looking in that direction. So, so as you can even see, this actually there's two little lights under that. It's actually lights underneath this vehicle here. So you see that um, there was reference that uh, I believe by the elder at the last meeting that there was somewhat of a crest, and you can see that here. Um, it is slight, and um, that that uh, calculated distance is um, really where the crest of that curve would be located. So, um, <clears throat> but as long as we meet it, um, there really is no requirement to really change anything at this point in time. Um, the one thing I will add, though, uh, to this, well, let me bring up the other photo just so you can see both directions. So this would just be looking down the hill. So as you can see, this is even further. You can see further down the street. Um, Bond Street, as you know, um, is a relatively like the street um, east-west. I wouldn't necessarily consider it a collector or anything, maybe in portions of it, but in this area it's, it's, it's pretty much residential. Um, but it does carry much more traffic than Park Street, and this is a T intersection um, that is currently uncontrolled. So uh, rules of the road would apply if there were two vehicles that arrived at the same time. Um, the person on the right um, would have right away. So. As you can tell, in a situation like this, I think it would probably be, uh, I guess, accommodating to most motorists that the head of the T would at least yield. Um, so in this case, given that we have that disparity between traffic volumes, the higher volume being um, Bond Street to East West Street here, in this case, I would recommend at minimum installing a yield sign. Um, going up to a stop sign, I don't think that would be, you know, we'd be almost bypassing the yield at that. I don't think that's. Um, really warranted at this point in time, but a yield sign I think is, would be adequate. Mr. Chairman, I'd move approval. Move for a yield sign, okay. Second for the Second yield sign. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Six. Refer to staff to study the need and cost of replacing pavement mar markings at the intersection of Dalson Street and Fifth Street. Uh, on the front of you, I passed out on the study itself. Um, it is 10 pages in length, but there's a lot of pretty pictures to look at at the same time. So um, that's the predominant reason for its length, but it's actually a pretty straightforward um, report. So you have a lot of uh, introductory type information as in gives you the context of the intersection itself, in case you're not aware of where it is. Uh, that there is a trail that, that uh, crosses through it. Um, the uh, southeast to the northwest. Um, the intersection is signalized um, and was reconstructed in 2008 from military to Latin. So basically the reconstruction went through this intersection. Um, land use around it is predominantly single family residential. Um, there is an elementary school uh, south and to the west of, of the uh, intersection and actually above the intersection. Um, Chapel Elementary. <coughs> that is, uh, so west of the intersection, you have one 12 foot travel lane in each direction and a 16 foot two way center turn lane. Um, presence of that 16 foot uh, center turn lane, I think, is really what has made this intersection somewhat unique because um, east of the intersection that does not exist. So there is a transition that is required to, um, in essence, taper that out. So, uh, and it, as you see, uh, on further pages, you'll see um, that effect. Um, 25 miles an hour, all streets posted. Uh, there are three bus routes, uh, the blue, the green, and the tan lines that uh, operate through the intersection. Um, now the photos and figures 3A, B, C, and D, I guess they're probably going to be um, the most important at this time. So looking at the uh, page five, you'll see that is the westbound movement. So I kind of have a far distance and then one that's a little bit uh, closer up. Um, now as you can tell with the far, you can see that the roadway basically does not change in width. So it's pretty much consistent all the way through. You can see the joint lines. These are, uh, I believe, 11 and 7 feet. That's where that joint line is in that movement. And then you'll see the lane configuration sign uh, carving out, in essence, a left turn lane and then a through right lane. Um, 3B, you'll see, is a little bit closer, and 
you can see how that white line, which separates the left turn and the through movement, um, if you look in the distance, it may not be as evident on here, but I do have actually um, the photos that are taken from that. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit and you'll see it a little bit clearer. Yeah, it's this one. This is 3B. So as you can see, this is what was brought up the last, at the last meeting, that this line doesn't necessarily line up with this line so much. Um, and in the other direction, it's even uh, a little bit more apparent. So figures 3C and D are basically going to be these photographs. I'm, I'm going to go through here. I just picked the best ones. So this is at that asphaltic uh, median to your left, bottom left on the image, um, is really the tapering out of that left turn lane. And let me just go back one. You can actually see this over here too as well. So these are the joint lines and, and the pavement markings, which as you can see, they match and they line up. And this one right here, I think really is the best photo to show how, again, we have a, a similar situation where it's a, I would say it's an offset exit approach in this case. So this is uh, in the center lane or the through lane. So this is what the motorists would see. So they do have to deviate slightly to the right as they go through the intersection. And this here is the center of this right turn lane. Now the, the reason I wanted to show you this photograph is if you look and extend this across, and this is the uh, curb line, face of the curb. And it comes in almost to about halfway into this lane. It's really not that drastic. It's maybe even about a third or whatnot. But uh, um, the reason I say that is, is that um, looking at what the study uh, objective was, which was to A, study the need, and B, look at costs, et cetera, to uh, restriping this intersection. Um, if you look at, I'm going to be skipping around a little bit. If you go to page 8, for the study, you will see figure four, what I did is I extended some of those lane lines. Um, so you'll see those purple lines are actually more the extension of the eastbound direction. So you kind of see how it slightly bends to the, to the north. And if you're going in the westbound direction, you'll see it, it still bends a little bit to the north, just not as drastic. So that kind of confirms what you've seen in the photographs. Um, you, you also see the lane list. Uh, there was a comment at the last meeting about having extra wide left turn lanes. Um, I think it's really relative because we have 12 and 12 and a half for the westbound and eastbound left turn lanes respectively, which I would not consider wide. Those are standard to a little bit wide. I think it's the relativeness in the through lanes compared to them because the through lanes are actually more narrow than uh, the left turn lanes. You have 10 foot. Uh, through lanes, so I guess that's probably where that comment was, was derived from. Um, so, figure four basically just confirms what you're seeing in, in the photographs. Um, now, figure five shows uh, what I would say would be in a realignment if there would be um, and where you would um, do it. So, you can see the, the beginning of those purple lines, it's really kind of the end of the, the skip dash lines and then somewhat angling them to the south in order to better match up. Um, and I do have a cost estimate for that and um, it's kind of, I don't want to say funny, but it's uh, a lot of times when you do these payment marking projects or any sort of, I would say, small scale <coughs> project, you get hit more in uh, mobilization costs, just the cost for the contractor just to show up on site and do his work. That's the bulk of the cost. Um, so I threw in a, about $1,000 in mobile charges or mobilization charges. Um, the removal is probably going to, again, be the most costly. Um, it would be, a, I would recommend a water blasting type of, of removal because if you scarify with other methods like milling, it leaves permanent marks in place, and especially in concrete, and one where if there was any sort of uh, new markings placed, um, they'd be so close that you would it almost kind of blur into it. So water blasting would definitely be the, uh, the type. But water blasting, um, although it's a very clean 
removal and you won't really see the line that was there. It's also costly. Um, I've seen a range anywhere from $1 per lineal foot to $3 per lineal foot, but when you start talking again in small quantities, you pay more per lineal foot. So um, in the range of the cost that I was able to find in some bid history, um, not necessarily local, but on DOT projects, so I've only got one um, project in history where I've, where I've uh, had to hire such a contractor, but $3 is probably about a reasonable lineal foot cost um, in installation. Is, is much less expensive, and I would go with an epoxy marking. So your estimate's about $2,300. Now, I, I only did that because I was asked to do a cost. Um, my recommendation, though, if you look at the page 10, that those are really my conclusions and my recommendations. So um, extension of those lane lines in the eastbound um, direction, um, you can tell um, that uh, they do overlap the existing, that would be by, and my measurement is about three and a half feet. Restriping the eastbound approach again, $2,300. Uh, however, since new markings would not coincide with the existing concrete pavement joint lines, the markings would somewhat be ineffective, especially during nighttime and inclement weather when motors tend to follow joint lines um, as lane lines. Um, I am talking about crash history here. If you want to look at the crash history, it's there. It's, it's, it's a pretty safe intersection. Um, Five-year crash history, I found six crashes. Um, none of them were attributable or had anything to do with the type of concern that was raised, which would mean a through a vehicle hitting someone, say, in an opposing left lane. That doesn't exist. There is none of that history. Um, so um, the last point, again, and I'm, I'm leaving it on this photo, is that if that lane line, that one that solid white line that you see right there was deviated to the right or skewed to the right, I'd be left with a, a substandard lane width. Um, the legal uh, width of a vehicle in the state of Wisconsin to travel roads is 8 foot 6. I'd be looking at probably a resulting of an 8 foot lane and it would taper down, which is <laughs> not the way we, we, we normally do it. So um, I don't think it's possible. I don't think it's possible to, to restripe this intersection unless it was reconstructed. Um, the only way I can look at justifying reconstruction is if we had some sort of a safety issue to correct. That doesn't exist. So with that said, my recommendation is to receive the place on file. <coughs> this, this study and the request to remark it. Yep. So that was the first thing that popped into my head is there still enough room for a right turn lane and there really isn't if you have to do that so no. I would agree with your conclusion um, you can't have a little tiny right turn lane <laughs> or you have no right turn lane yes and, 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 and the reason I brought up the bus route <coughs> is that there are those three bus routes that actually use it and one of them is a right turning movement uh, that, that okay. right turning movement probably would <laughs> wouldn't be able to <coughs> and then it would hold up. Right. So Holden Stoyer has seen this? He has not seen it. He's asked for a copy of it. I have talked with him about right. it. Is he coming back? I saw him through a moment. So, no. okay. Mr. Chairman, I move to receive a place on file. Second. Motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Termination of trial periods. Uh, Dave, I'll start at 7, that a 90-day travel to establish a one-way stop condition on Purple Sage Drive at Whittier Drive. Right. This was more of a um, formalization of an area that um, it was a residential street matching up into a collector roadway, so the default is a, is a one-way stop. So um, no issues, complaints, concerns heard from that. Uh, 8 and 9 can actually be put together. And that was really just the removal of the one-way yield August Street at Shane Street, and upgrading it from yield to a stop condition that was based off of proximity to this uh, school and um, and for uh, pedestrian concerns, uh, vehicles not stopping and yielding uh, for pets. So that's working fine. Um, and ten. Uh, let's see here. Oh, this is uh, over by the art garage where. Uh, they wanted uh, the request was 
uh, and by the artisan center as well for removal of that no parking zone and uh, we didn't really see the need for it to be there in the first place so we had no no issues with it um, again no questions complaints concerns uh, from uh, any uh, any people on that? I don't know, Dave. If that's in your district. If you've I'm, heard I'm fine with it. No problems. Okay. Um, that that said, <coughs> when, this, uh, when this goes past council, then then we'll remove the post. We had left the post there just in case something came up. So you can tell uh, in case your constituents contact you, um, that we'll be removing those posts. Um, and then the last one, number eleven. Um, this is Washington Street. Um, over by City to Court to Main Street. This was for that uh, modification of the uh, bump up in that location and uh, increase that over um, just south of City Deck Court. Um, that project is completed and um, I believe the meters are as well in place. So um, that one's kind of a gimme, it has to go <laughs> that way because the, the roadway infrastructure now matches it. So I make a recommendation for item 711 to be uh, moved. From 90 day trial to be adopted by ordinance. <coughs> so moved. Motion been made. Second. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, the only final item is uh, next month's meeting. Okay. Yep. Uh, Monday, October 17th, 5 30 in this room. Okay. Does he got any concerns at this time? Time? Not? Okay. I will entertain a motion to adjourn then. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made and second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Gosh, that had to be a record. record. Yeah, At least for the year. <laughs> <laughs> First meeting okay. in a while. Is there any, anybody in the public to speak about?